It's not a Porsche, it's a Roof CTR. One of 29 made. The C's for Group C, the T's for Turbo, and the R is for Roof. But you might know it as the Yellow Bird. Made famous in 1987 when this was the fastest car in the world at 211 miles an hour. In 88, it did 213 miles an hour. And it earned global status in 1989 when Stefan Rosa smoked the tires and drifted it around the Nürburgring. Today's a lucky day for me because I'm actually going to get to drive the car for the first time with Aloisa Roof over here, the daughter of Aloise and Estonia. Hey, how morning, are you doing? Morning, Magnus. Top how of are the morning. You? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Quick question Have you ever driven on Los Angeles Crest Highway? Not yet, no. That was the first time for everything. Absolutely. Well, let's go for a drive. This is an awesome road where we'll get to stretch the legs, maybe get a little bit of booze, talk about roof, talk about your life, and of course, talk about the yellow bird. I'm excited. Let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. All right, let's go have some fun. So here I am behind the wheel of the world famous Roof CTR. A car known as the Yellow Bird. Bigger brakes, bigger wheels, but still under this narrow body, stealth, aerodynamic, slippery silhouette. Yeah. And all those pieces together allowed it to achieve the goal of the world's fastest car, which it held for a long, long time. So this car is the essence of what roof means. It's simple, yet precise engineering, it's lightweight, and it's exhilarating and built with a lot of love and care. The Yellow Bird was kind of somewhat unplanned in the sense, I believe, of they didn't want the car to be red because the Lamborghinis were red, the Ferraris were going to be red, and yeah. they wanted it to stand down. Yeah, basically. Who picked the shade of yellow? Now my father. My father did. He said, let's make the car yellow. There was no further thought of it. That was like, it. You, that was it. Yellow's, yellow's going to stand out. I'm just, wow, I'm just daydreaming a little bit with the California the dreaming. There, yeah. All the leaves at all. There you the go. That would be a good song. Oh, you I know was what else thinking. Would be, you know what would be great for this car? Well, yellow, yellow. Have you know that song? Be coming. Well, yellow. yellow. That would be the song. You know what I was thinking? Free bird, but then it's skinny. Well, that for sure is good, but, and that's one of my things. Mellow yellow. Does the car have a limited slip rear end differential? Ah, uh, yes. yes. Okay, so six speed limited slip, 3.4 liter, twin turbo. Uh, you can't forget about the 330 millimeter brakes from the 962. Yeah. Tell me about the brakes, tell me about the 3.4 liter turbo and how this car was sort of envisioned possibly as a grip seat car for the street. Well, I mean, when it came to the engineering, my father just, um, you know, he wanted to build his dream car and bring in all aspects and bringing as much, you know, power and stability at the same time that you can't possibly on a street car back in the 80s. And, you know, when you have such a, when you have such a powerful engine, you need perfect brakes to work with, like you need race brakes. Yeah, sometimes you, you have to stop. Corners, exactly, you can't just go. So, you know, it's, and laid very close to take the 330mm brakes. I will say, it sounds great, <laughs> it shifts great. So 29 were built. Your father, I believe, still owns the prototype, the one that sent all those records, yes. right? The 29 production vehicles didn't have the knackerduct on the rear quarter that the prototype did. And 29 of these production vehicles were made on roof bin numbers, let's not forget. Roof is an automobile manufacturer in its own right since 1981. Apparently though, they also built 20 customer cars. And I can assume that just means you could take your 3.2 Carrera to Roof and have them do just this. Turn it into the 3.4 liter twin turbo. Okay, Aloisa, Roof, it's your family name. Yes. The CTR, this is the car that really, I think, put Roof on the map. Would that be safe to say? That would be safe to say. 29 of them built, you own the prototype. 
this is the second one you've driven, I believe. Yes. Tell me what makes it a roof and not a Porsche. Let's talk about design first. Okay. So a roof signature is that we remove the rain gutters so we don't have the extra um, wind noise um, at high speeds. Then we can talk about the classic roof rim. I mean, this is one of our staple pieces that people have always fallen in love with and with the interlock in the same color. Tell me about the oil tank. It looks like you've moved it forward. It's just behind the B pillar. Is this for weight balance? Tell me what's going it's on It's absolutely here. for weight balance. We moved it to the back, you know, again, racing inspired. We moved it back so we have a um, better point of gravity. This is a very unique touch to the roof car, right? Yes, along with absolutely. The, along with the rain gutter delete weight balance. So it's form and function all the way through. All the way through. The actual tires were developed together with Dunlop for okay. the high speed driving because at that time nobody has ever done that before and to stress test tires at those speeds that were not for track cars. So um, Roof worked together back in the 80s with Dunlop to develop these very unique tires and my father also designed the, the roof rim, as they like to call it. Yeah, yeah. So it's still, action is still alive. Back in the day in 87, did your dad know the car would do 211 miles an hour? Did he know? Probably not before, I mean, the high-speed testing, but he knew it had its power. So he'd figured out the gear ratio, the power, yeah. the aerodynamics. Which parts on the car are aluminum, or as the Euros say, aluminum? So we have the door. The doors, okay. We have the front bonnet. Okay. And then we have... Um, yeah, the whale tail. The whale tail, there you go. <laughs> this is no longer a naturally aspirated 3.2 litre motor from a Carrera. Tell me what it is. This is a 3.4 litre twin turbo. Twin Boxster. turbo. Boxster engine. I mean, this is a tr traditional, you know, um, based on the six cylinder Boxster motor and then roof turned into 3.4 litre with the twin turbo. The first 911 to have twin turbo. So your dad beat Porsche to the, to the twin turbo charged punch. Yeah. This is really impressive. Yeah, it now, depends. Now, how much power does this have? 460. So, heart and soul, 3.4 liter twin turbo, six speed manual. Why did he keep it two wheel drive? For the fun of it. For the fun of it. Yes, yeah, so we can look inside. We have the typical roof five, um, five instrument layout that I, that's my personal favorite of the car. Of course, keys are on the left, really below. That's right. And um, when you look inside, okay. and you can look at our boost button. The, the boost, boost is button. completely off. You can twist it and, and- Oh, I see it right there. Manually alter the boost. So you can manually alter the boost. So 29 of these were built from when? 87 to, this is an 89? 90. To 90? Yeah. All righty. What is the total weight of the car? Is it around 2,500 pounds or something? Well, like yeah, it's 1,100 kilograms. Kilo. All right, so we can times that yeah. by 2.2 or something and figure it out. Yeah. As history goes, the 356 really, I believe, was somewhat of the birth of the family business, right? Yeah, essentially so. Well, the Tell family me that story. business um, started in 1939 under okay. my grandfather, which makes uh, Roof actually a few years older than Porsche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my grandfather started building his own car as soon as the wartime, it was trying to find means of transportation. And since Pfaffenhausen is a very, very small village, he also built his own bus to take people to Munich, to take people to cities nearby. Okay. And um, when my father um, was a little boy, he was in my grandfather's bus. They were driving and the 356 overtook him. Unfortunately, that car passed them, lost control, ended up in the ditch. My grandfather and my father took the gentleman, the driver, to the hospital, of course, to make sure that he was okay. I mean, they were literally right behind wow. him. And my father, as a little boy, asked him, and said, oh, what, what car is this? Tell me more. I mean, I've never, it's an enigma. And then the gentleman said, this is a Porsche. And then my father said, one day I'm going to have one of those. And then, long story short, the gentleman, you know, he was, he was very well. Thank God nothing happened to him. He sold the car to my grandfather. My father and my grandfather restored that car and fixed it up. Drove it to Munich as a, you know, it's a celebratory event that they have this incredible car. And somebody knocks on their window and says, I'll buy this from you. I bet. Post-war time Germany, they sold the car. They, my father and my grandfather looked at each other and said, oh, this is our future. This is it. This is the future. Then, what year was that when the second version of Roof Automobile was formed? This is in 1958. 1958? Wow, wow, wow been around a long, long time. Long, long time. Tell me your 
your story. Well, How is it being part of this iconic family? I, well, I grew up in the family business, surrounded by these beautiful, beautiful vehicles. And I basically grew up in my father's workshop. I remember the first car that um, was being developed when I was, I was part of the family with the CTR3. And I remember that I was able to be part in the clay modeling and I had great fun with that as a little girl. I entered the family business as a mechanic at age 15. Wanted to learn more about the intricacies of the cars. Not only, you know, be a fan of them, I wanted to know them inside out. I w we also have a restoration department, which is where I started off working with my uncle, restoring 356s, 911s's, regular 911s. I restored my own Porsche 912, which I drive daily in Germany. That's your daily driver? That's my daily driver. What year is the 912 you restored? 968. And I love the problem solving aspect of it. When it comes to the restoration, the history, when it comes to the CTR anniversary production line, which is the car that we released in 2017, we can visit it as a, right. you know, in Geneva. Um, I've also been working recently there, and it's just, every part feels like a piece of jewelry. And being able to mount them together, create you know this insane vehicle together, be part of that production process, it's just so exhilarating. And you, you know, you never learn enough. This car that we're currently in is from 1989. The roof yellow bird put roof on the mouth. It was based on a 3.2 litre Carrera, body in white, back in 1987. It broke the world record and the Yera Lissim high-speed test track. With my father driving it. It was the fastest car of the world for that year, beating other cars like, you know, the F40 and, you know. The Lamborghinis. The, yeah. the Lamborghinis, you know, all the icons of the 80s. Who's better driver, your mum or your dad? Your dad. Really? Yeah. What? I don't I know mean, what your mum was. She'd also say my dad. Okay. The mum is a great driver. My father has been it for longer than she has, yes. you know. How did they mean? Oh, that's a beautiful love story, actually. So my mother is Venezuelan. Okay. Although her name is Estonia, which can be misleading. And... <laughs> she went to college in the United States and she was working for Univision, which is the biggest Spanish television company in the yeah. United States. And she was doing really, really well. And also was working simultaneously at the Hilton Hotel and was organizing a Porsche North America event. And the guest of honor was Mr. Alice Roof. What year was that? Gosh, this must have been in 93, 94. Fuck you. So she helped you know, Porsche North America organized this event at the Hilton and then met the star of the show. Turns out that she was a star. Ma, there you go. Yeah. How he's kept the prototype. The car that sat all those records in 87, 88, and 89. What Roof has done here with the six speed it's eliminated the tall gears. Twin turbo, a lot more torque. This almost has 50% more power than the Porsche 930 at the time. So it's able to put the power to the ground in a more efficient way with almost 50% more power than the two wheel drive 930. Well, let's not forget, it's also a lot, not a lot quicker, but quicker than the 959 on all those levels, which was all wheel drive. This is still rear wheel drive and I have to admit on my favorite road the car is just a joy to drive it's razor sharp I don't quite know what roof has done with the suspension you know I don't know what the full setup is but it's compliant but not overly jerky you know there's a slight slight amount of roll you feel it but it's not a worrying nerving roll the car inspires confidence and I have to admit the way it shifts is unbelievable. Six speed in a G body car. I just got more gears to play with. And when that turbo comes on and the wastegate opens up, it's just such an intoxicated sound. This is not a Porsche, but everything is Porsche like. Anyone that's driven a Porsche of this era will feel instantly comfortable in this car. It's the same iconic five dials gauges are laid out the same way 
same Recaro sport seats. This has an integrated factory roll bar for more torsion, uh, rigidity and stiffness and of course safety. But the car is not intimidating in the way, let's say, a Carrera GT is. You know, anyone that's driven any 911 from the 80s, you'll feel comfortable in this car straight away. The clutch is not heavy. The way it shifts is literally like that knife through hot butter. It's not balky. It's not notchy. It just goes right where you need it. It's not an aftermarket short throw. You know, Roof could have put a five speed dog leg box in that he'd been running in his own turbo conversions. And next time I see him, I'm going to ask him exactly why he chose to put the six speed box in this setup. But I have to say it works exceptionally well. One of the smoothest shifting cars with all the power you ever really need. But it's the type of car you could really, really live with. It's the type of car I like is usable performance. And other than it's look at me, I'm a roof yellow bird color scheme. This was in a more subdued color. It's slightly toned down. So my hat off to Alois Roof, Estonia Roof, and Aloisa Roof for allowing me to get some seat time in this icon of automotive history, the Roof CTR Yellowbird. So stay tuned. I'm gonna drop it a gear and press on down the road. Cheers and rock on. <laughs> <laughs>